Well, good morning, pre-calculus class. I hope you had a wonderful three-day weekend. This is a video on angle, sum, and difference identities. And <clears throat> before we do that, let's, uh, before we actually get to the identities, we need to look at our unit circle and know the trig functions from the following angles. So we have all of these angles that were in the unit circle, and we should now know all of the trig functions, all six of them, especially sine and cosine and tangent for these 17 angles, but not only in degrees, but we should also know them in radians as well. And I'm going to make this chart, you can pause it and write it down if you want to, but it's no different than what's in the unit circle. And that's thinking that sine and cosine, remember that's like the coordinate pair where cosine is the x and sine is the y in the unit circle. So if I make my chart with cosine on the left and sine on the right, it's really just listing the ordered pairs for each of these angles. And so, I have each of the ordered pairs at each angle. Again, after this is done, you can pause it and write them down if you'd like. Please note that, of course, these are all quadrant 1, so both cosine and sine are positive. This would be quadrant 2, where cosine is negative, but sine is positive. And lastly, we have over here these angles where this is quadrant 3, both the sine and cosine are negative, and quadrant four where cosine is positive and sine is negative. So we need to know these, um, especially sine and cosine, for these 17 angles. Because we're going to use those 17 angles together to create a third angle, such that the third angle, meaning theta, is going to either be a sum of two of the known angles, or theta will be the difference of two of those known angles from the unit circle. So we're going to look at an addition problem first. We're going to assign our theta of 105, and we have to figure out what would be the two known angles, or alpha and beta, that we could use to add up to make 105. And we find, oh, 45 plus 60 works. So we're going to go through a few of these just so that we have some additions to create our theta. What if we had 195? Well, we could have 135 plus 60. Both of those are on that chart of 17 angles that we're supposed to know. Or, that's not the only combination that adds up to 195. We could have 45 plus 150. It won't matter which two angles we use as long as they add up to the 195 and the alpha and beta that we're using come from the 17 known angles in our unit circle. So here's another angle, 285 degrees. I didn't put the degree marks. I, it just got too tiny to write on my iPad. So 285 degrees, and that could be the sum of 135 and 150, or it could be the sum of 45 and 240, or there's even a third one. It could be 225 plus 60. You can be creative and figure out what pairs to add up to equal your theta, your, your angle that you're really looking for. Let's look also at subtraction. Well, with subtraction, we're going to start with 105 again and just think about what two known angles, and you do 150 minus 45. Um, for negative 75, it would be 60 minus 135. If it was positive 75, well, now this is understanding subtraction, that all you have to do is switch your subtens, these two numbers that you were subtracting, 135 minus 60, and you would get the positive. So now we, we've explored this idea of finding um, angle pairs that either add up to equal our, equal our theta, so we're using theta equals alpha plus beta, or you subtract them to get your theta. Let's also look, though, at radians, because that's important. So if, what if my, my theta was 5 pi over 12? Well, I could break that up into 2 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12, and you might ask why. Well, that's because 2 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 6, a known angle and 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4, again, a known angle. So all of our radians, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at ways to add things up. Notice that each time I picked two angles that I knew would reduce. And I'd look at, I'm just looking at 5, and I'm thinking, well, 2 and 3 are both factors of 12, so they would reduce in these fractions. As long as you have fractions that will reduce, you'll know you will get known angles. Subtraction, we do the same idea. And so again, you can pause these and look at those to, to identify them better. Now that we have explored this, we're ready to use the angle sum and addition. 
And recall that the sine of alpha plus beta, I had you in class chant this, it was sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And then we have our alpha, beta, alpha, beta. And what's really important with sine is sine stays the same. If I'm adding alpha plus beta, I'm going to add these two groups together. So here's an example. If I had sine of 105, well, I'm going to write that as sine of 45 plus 60. So I'm going to write sine, cosine, cosine, sine, and then 45, 60, 45, 60. Since this is adding 45 and 60, I'm going to add the two groups. If this had been a subtraction problem, then I would be subtracting these two groups. I now find sine of 45. I, I, since I have all of these memorized, it's just a matter of recalling them and writing them down. And remember, this is multiplication, sine 45 times cosine of 60. So I'm multiplying these two factors, and I'm going to multiply these two factors. And they have a, both have a common denominator of 4, and so I can write that as 1 fraction, root 2 plus root 6, all over 4. Let's look at cosine. Well, if we have the, the, the angle addition identity for cosine, and cosine, we had, remember in class, I had you chant cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Again, we put alpha, beta, alpha, beta. But with cosine, if this is addition, then we do the opposite here. We're going to subtract the two groups. And that's crucial that you remember that, that we're adding the angles, so we're going to subtract the two groups. Again, let's put something in here. And this time I used a radian, so we can have practice with that. Well, 13 pi over 12 can be, reduced, can be split up to 9 pi over 12 and 4 pi over 12. And I picked those because 9 plus 4 equals 13, and 9 and 4 are both factors of 12. Or they have common factors with 12, I should say. So I'm going to reduce that fraction, and so 9 pi over 12 is the same as 3 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 12 is the same thing as pi over 3. So I write cosine, cosine, sine, sine, and I put in my angles 3 pi over 4, pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, pi over 3. Since this is addition, I'm going to subtract those two groups. I've got my memorized trig, um, my trig values here, so I put them in. Multiply. Notice I have a common denominator, and I have the final answer. On your handout, you also have angle addition identity for tangent. I am not going to be testing you on this identity, but I do want you to do it on the worksheet. So here it is. This is the um, angle addition identity using tangent, and here's the angle subtraction identity using tangent. You might want to pause the video and write those down. Note that when I'm adding tangent, the angles here, I'm adding at the top and subtracting on the bottom. When I'm subtracting the two angles, I'm subtracting on the top and I'm adding on the bottom. That's just something to kind of remember it by. But write these down. Now, what I want you to do is practice three or four problems on the worksheet um, right now. Um, after this video is over, with do three or four problems. Make sure that you understand how to do it. As an entire class, not just in your groups of four, I want you to create a classroom discussion to figure out, are you having any issues? Are there any difficulties? Are there things you don't quite understand? Create, you know, come together and, and create two or three questions um, that you'll have prepared for me, and then have one student, not all of you, just one student, is going to call on the speakerphone, and you could ask me the questions and we could work it out. I hope everything goes well, and I will talk to you tomorrow on the next video. Bye-bye.